What up everybody? Um, so I'm doing this video because a couple of days ago, I think it was, um, no, it, it was yesterday or last night. Um, so a couple people, a few, or maybe four, I think, accused me of teaching people false doctrine, mainly about the Sabbath. Um, well, first of all, I'm not a teacher. I don't, I don't really teach. I just give people, I show people what the Bible says. I don't, teach it i'm not a teacher um and so it's they accuse me of mainly um teaching false doctrine about the sabbath right mainly the sabbath they say that you know you don't have to keep the sabbath anymore because that's the old covenant um you know and that um that uh you can keep sunday now because whatever you do you do to the glory of god We'll talk about that later um, at the end of this video. But um, I, I, this is why I say that it's a sin to break the Sabbath. The seventh day Sabbath, which is written by God in the two tables of stone where the Ten Commandments are written. Right? First of all, how many... How many laws are there? Well, there, there's the there's the original law, which is written by God, the Ten Commandments, and then there's the Mosaic law. There are two distinct laws. The Mosaic law and the Ten Commandments are two distinct laws. They're not together. They're separate. One is given by God. The other is given by Moses. One is written on ta the tables of stone. The other is written on paper. Okay, let's let's look at that. Okay, Deuteronomy 4, verses 13 and 14. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. Talking about God, right? God wrote the ten commandments on two, on two table, tables of stone. Verse 14. And the Lord commanded me, that's Moses, at that time to teach you statutes, and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither you go over to possess it, to possess it. So two distinct laws, right? The Ten Commandments written on two tables of stone by God, written by God's own finger, and then the command that the the, the statutes and the judgments that Moses has to teach them, right? Two separate things. Okay, let's take a look at what Exodus 24, 12 says. Exodus 24 and verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have, which I have written that thou mayest teach them. So this is, this is the, two, the, the Ten Commandments that God wrote with his own fingers, because it says, and commandments which I have written on two tables of stone, right? So this is the, the, the Ten Commandments that God wrote with his own fingers. <coughs> now, Exodus 31 and 18. Exodus 31 and verse 18. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai two tables of stone. Two tables of uh, testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. It's, it clearly says that the two tables of stone, the Ten Commandments, was written by the finger of God. Right? Second Kings 21 and verse 8. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them, according to all that I have commanded them, that's God speaking, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. Two separate things. The according to all that I have commanded them, and according to the law that Moses commanded them. Again, two separate, two separate uh, laws, two separate things. Right, Daniel 9 and verse 11. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, the law of God even by departing, that they might not um, obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, again, making two separate distinctions, 
Does that make sense? It says, Thy law, right? Yea, all Israel have trans transgressed thy law, the law of God. And then and then later on it says, um, the curse is, is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because he have because we have sinned against them, against him, I mean. So again, two separate two separate laws. Law of God, law of Moses, Mosaic law, ten co ten commandments. I made a chart. Um, hopefully you guys can see it. Can you guys see it? I'm sorry, this is not one of those fancy videos. This is just a vlog. Um, so here it is. Um, two distinct laws, right? The Mosaic Law and the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments written by God. Mosaic Law, which we'll talk about in a little bit, written by Moses, right? Ten Commandments. The first table of stone um, shows our love for God. You know, this is this this is our relationship towards God. Second table of stone, our relationship towards our neighbor. So, love for God, one, two, three, four, because the 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 commandments that 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 relates to God only um, only the first, second, third, and fourth commandment contains, right? And then love for neighbor, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the first four, um, if we love God. We will keep the four, the first four, right? If we love our neighbor, we will keep the last six. So that's the the Ten Commandments, and you know that's why Jesus says, "Love God with all your heart, and then love your neighbor." Ten Commandments, and then you can even simplify the two. Love, love everybody, love God, love neighbor, love, right? Um, so this right here, this this. Two tables of stone, this the Ten Commandments was written by God. Right? So if they um if Israel back in the day, if they sinned, like say, I don't know, you covet, right? What did they have to do? Moses says, and you can find this in Exodus 25 to 28, and Exodus 35 through Leviticus 9. I would read it to you guys, but I mean, that, that's a lot of chapters, you know what I'm saying? You guys can read it for yourself. Um, it, it'll take me like two hours or whatever. So, if, if, um, if, if Israel transgressed the law, say they covet, right? You got to sacrifice a lamb, which pointed to Christ. But right now, you know, since they're in, you know, since back in the day or whatever, Christ hasn't come yet. So, they had to sacrifice a lamb. And what comes with sacrificing a lamb sanctuary service um there's the courtyard you know if you guys see if you guys read exodus 25 to 28 exodus 35 to leviticus 9 you you can find out about the sanctuary service there's the courtyard with the altar of burnt offerings um bronze laver or laver or whatever um then there's the holy place which contains the lampstand the table of showbread altar of incense and then the most holy place and the only thing that's in the most holy place is the ark of the covenant right so what they did was if they sinned they had to sacrifice a lamb they had to do all the, the sanctuary service they had to kill the or kill, i'm gonna say kill i guess whatever sacrifice the lamb they had to take the uh the blood from the lamb they had to sprinkle it on the um on the veil inside the inside the uh most the holy place um so that's what they had to do in order to get right with God because they transgressed the law. And along with that, they had to also observe the annual Sabbath days, which which are these annual Sabbath days are the feast days, which are different from the fourth commandment, right? The seventh day Sabbath is the fourth commandment. That's different from the annual Sabbath days, which are the feast days. You can see you can read it in Leviticus 23. Right? The Passover Feast of the first fruits, feast of weeks, um, feast of trumpets, day of atonement, feast of the tabernacles. Those are all the Sabbath days that they had to observe, um, and this is different. Uh, this is the annual Sabbath days, and this is different from the seventh day, seventh day Sabbath. I can't talk correctly today, um, and let's let's read about that actually. Uh, Leviticus twenty three. Leviticus twenty three.
Uh, Leviticus 23, verse 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of, uh, of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, the feast days of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath rest, or the Sabbath of rest, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. Remember that. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your, in all your dwellings. So he's uh, stating the fourth commandment, right? And then after that, he, he states all the feast days. He says, these are the feasts of the Lord. This is verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, or convocation, not convocations, convocations which ye shall proclaim in their season. In the 14th day, oh, we don't have to read, well, you guys can read that. Um, it talks about the Passover, it talks about the feast of the, uh, feast of the, what is it? feast of first fruits, feast of the weeks, feast of weeks, I mean, feast of, of trumpets, um, feast, uh, the, the day of atonement, and feast of the tabernacles. That's all in, um, in verse, that's all in Leviticus 23. Right, and and it'll show you, it'll tell you which which days they fall on in the year. So these are annual feast days, which are different from from the the fourth commandment, which is the seven day Sabbath. How do we know? We can go to uh, Leviticus twenty three and verse thirty seven when he's done talking about all the feast days. He says, God says, these are the feast days um, of the Lord which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon, the, upon his day. Beside, he's making a distinction now, beside the Sabbaths of the Lord. Now remember, in verse, I think, 3, in verse 3, he states, in verse 3, where is it? Where is it? Okay. In verse 3, he says, Six days shall, shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord. Right? And then he names all these feast days, the Passover, the Feast of, uh, the, feast of the First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and then the Feast of the Tabernacles. And then he says... In verse 37, these are the feasts of the Lord, right? And then in, in verse 38, he says, beside the Sabbath of the Lord. So he's making a distinction, right? Those feast days, which are also called Sabbath days, are different from the Sabbath of the Lord, which is the seventh day Sabbath, which is contained in the fourth commandment, right? So again, again, Fourth commandment, annual Sabbaths, different, right? They're distinct. This, the fourth commandment is contained in the, in the two tables of stone or in the first table of stone. The annual Sabbath days, that's the, the these, these right here are written by Moses in Deuteronomy and um, uh, Exodus 25 through 28, you guys can read it. Exodus 35 through Leviticus 9, you guys can read that too. Le Leviticus 23, um, Moses wrote that too, right? The only thing that Moses did not write, that, that um, well, he rewrote it, but he did not originally write, is this. This was written by the, by, the, the, by the finger of God himself, right? The Ten Commandments. So, again, if, you, if, if Israel broke one of these Ten Commandments, what they had to do, sacrifice a lamb, do the sanctuary service, also observe the, the annual Sabbath days, which is different from the fourth commandment, right? Um, so now, in Jeremiah 31, verse 31, um, God says that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So, the new covenant is only for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. But how can that be? I'm a Gentile. Right? How can the, the new covenant be for me too? 
Galatians 3, um, Paul says that if you are Christ's, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, right? Abraham's seed, Israel, or Judah. That's Abraham's seed, right? Um, so if we are Christ's, if you believe in Christ, if you have faith in Christ, you are Abraham's seed, you are Israel as well, spiritually. So you are. that's why you're part of the new covenant, because um, Jeremiah 31, 31 says that the new covenant is only for Israel and Judah. But if you're Christ, you are Israel, spiritually. Um, and so that, what is the new covenant? Jesus Christ, right? He sacrificed, um, he's the sacrifice for us. He's the Lamb of God, John calls him. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the of the world, right? So, lying is a sin, correct? Or dishonor, dishonoring your parents is a sin, correct? So if you dishonor your parents, what do you have to do? Do you have to sacrifice a lamb? No. You don't sacrifice lambs anymore. That's, that's done away with because... Or that's fulfilled because we have Jesus Christ. So if you... Break the if you dishonor your parents, that's number five. All you got to do is repent. This is done, these are done, are for fulfilled in Christ. All right? I, if you guys can see that, hopefully, you guys can. That says Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't know if you guys can see that, whatever. Um, if you covet your neighbor, that's a sin, right. You don't have to sacrifice a lamb anymore. You don't have to, you know, do the feast days or whatever. Because that's fulfilled in Christ. So all we have to do is repent. If you um, bow to idols, that's number two. That's a sin, correct? So you don't have to sacrifice a lamb anymore. Because we have Jesus Christ who, who was the ultimate sacrifice you have to repent the fourth commandment if you break the seventh day sabbath guess what you have to do you don't have to sacrifice a lamb anymore because that's done right? it's fulfilled now we have christ we have to repent this is the law of god this is the mosaic law if you break the law of God, you have to do this in order to get right with God, right? But see, this is done. It's it's fulfilled we, because we have Jesus Christ who fulfilled it. That's what the Bible says. I mean, it's if you if you if you just read the Bible, that's what the Bible is saying. What people tend to do is they say, "Oh, you know, these, you know, the 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 sacrificial lamb and, and this, the sanctuary service, and this is done. We don't have to do that anymore. And they take this, okay? Let me see. Okay. They take the fourth commandment, okay? They take the fourth commandment and they stick it in here, right? And then they say, we don't have to do this anymore because they stuck it in here, right? Can you guys see that? So the fourth commandment, they stick it in here and they say, oh, sacrificial lamb, over. Sanctuary service, over. Um, you know, the uh, annual Sabbaths, over. Along with the fourth commandment, over. Can you do that? Can you take the fourth commandment and stick it in here? Without authorization by God? No, you can't do that, right? Because you have you don't have the right to do that. You you're not God, you're not Jesus Christ, you're not the Holy Spirit. You don't have the right to take this out of the Ten Commandments and stick it in here. Therefore, it is still a sin if you break the Sabbath commandment. Right? I hope that's um I hope that's clear. And this is why I believe 
that it's a sin to break this because it's just it's part of the Ten Commandments that God wrote Himself. This is the Mosaic Law. This is God's law. And then there are some people that say, "Oh, but there, you know, there's a there's a verse in the Bible that says, um, there's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, you know, whatever you do, do to the glory of God." So if you go to church on Sunday and break the Sabbath, you, you're doing to the glory of God. Well, I mean, if, if that applies to that, what about killing? I'm going to kill to the glory of God. Hey, there's a drug dealer over there. He's a menace to society. So I'm going to go and shank him, and I'm going to do it to the glory of God. Shank, glory to you, God. Is that, is that right? I'm going to lie to my, um, I'm going to lie to my spouse. I'm going to cheat on my spouse and lie to my spouse that I didn't cheat on her. And I'm going to do, do it to the, to, to the glory of God. Is that correct? I'm going to bow down to idols and I'm going to do it to the glory of God. Is that correct? Is that, is that right? Does, that, does, does killing people, does that glorify God? I mean, use your brain. Use your brain. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, just use your brain. I'm not, I don't want to... I don't want to offend anybody, but God gave you a brain. It's common sense. You don't kill people to the glory of God. You don't lie to the glory of God. You don't, um, you don't have any other gods to the glory of God. You don't bow down to idols to the glory of God. So you don't break the Sabbath to the glory of God. That doesn't make sense. Right? Um, and I'm saying this, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but... People are telling me that I'm, you know, I'm teaching people the false doctrines. It's clear. The Bible says it. if you if you just read the Bible, we have eyes, we have a brain. We we can read the Bible. If we just read the Bible, it's clear. It's clear. And that's why I believe that it's that breaking the Sabbath commandment is is a is a sin. And just as much as lying is a sin. Or Dishonoring your parents, that's a sin. So if you, if you break those laws, guess what you got to do? You don't have to sacrifice a lamb anymore because that's fulfilled in Christ. So now we have to repent. I hope that's clear. I mean, you, you guys can't say. I, I know some of you guys are probably, you know, have your biased opinions. And, and, you know, just because it's coming from me that it's not true. I mean, read the Bible, man. You know what I'm saying? Like before you accuse someone of teaching false doctrines or teaching false doctrines to, to his followers. I don't have followers. I mean, people like my page and they're subscribed to my YouTube, but they're not my followers. You know what I'm saying? I, I direct them straight to the Bible. They're not my followers. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know, before you guys accuse me or anybody else who's, who's doing this of teaching false doctrines, look at the evidence. I give you guys evidence. I, I even made you guys a chart. I gave you guys a bunch of, you know, some scripture. I gave you guys chapters that you guys can read on your own. I, I don't have time to read it for you guys because it'll take me about an hour, hour and a half to read it to you guys. And explain everything. You know what I mean? It's there. It's in the Bible. So you can't say, oh, there's no scriptural evidence for this. Because I just gave it to you. Right? You can't say that. But if you guys still have a biased opinion about me and about what I tell people and, and what, what um, the, the verses that I give people, read it, you know, read it for yourself and see if it makes sense. Like, honestly, read it. Leave the bias alone. All the, your, your own ideas, leave it alone. Let, let the Bible teach you what you should, um, what you should uh, believe. Let, let the Bible teach you and see if it makes sense. You know what I mean? Does it make sense? Like I said, huh? Does it make sense? Like if if this is this is the Mosaic law and that's God's law, does it make sense to take this law, to take to take the fourth commandment and stick it in here and say that it's over with? You can't. You don't have to do that anymore. Does that make sense? No, right? Because the Mosaic law is different from the from God's law, and we and we read about that. I mean, it's. It's really simple, man. You know what I'm saying? It's it's really simple if we if we just read the Bible. It's super simple. 
It's easy. And if you don't get it, you pray. You pray. Is it a sin for you to go to church on Sunday? No, it's not a sin. But I can tell you 100% confidently that it's a sin to break the Sabbath. I can tell you that. Because the Bible says that. The, that's what the Bible teaches. I can't say it's a sin to go to church on Sunday. I can't say that. Because the Bible doesn't teach that. It's not a sin to go to church on Sunday. We worship God every day, right? But it's a sin to break the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath is the fourth commandment, which is attached to the Ten Commandments, to the, to, to the two tables of stone that God wrote Himself. Right? It's Ten Commandments, not nine. If it's a sin to lie, and that's attached to the same Ten Commandments that God wrote, then why is it not a sin to break the Sabbath? I get this a lot, you know, and this is what Jesus went through too. They say, um, you know, like Jesus went to the for the cornfield and, and picked the corn and, or what is it? Carnals of corn or whatever and, and ate it or had, had his disciples ate it. And they say, oh, that's, you're breaking the Sabbath. Where in the Bible, where where in the fourth commandment does it say you can't go to the cornfield and pick corn and, and eat it? It's not in the fourth commandment. And there's some people that say, oh, you, you walked you walked two blocks on the Sabbath. Oh, that's breaking the Sabbath. You you traveled from your house to church. That's how many miles? That's uh I don't know, ten miles, right? That's ten miles. Oh, you just broke the Sabbath. Where in the fourth commandment, if you go to the fourth commandments in, in Exodus 20, to the original fourth commandment, where, where there, where does it say um, that it's not okay to uh, travel to go to church 10 miles away? Where does it say? On the original fourth commandment. Not the, not the, not the Sabbath commandments of the Pharisees. The fourth commandment of God. And some some even you know accuse me and say you know they 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 go to my Facebook or whatever and they and they um and they just constantly look at the 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 things that I'm doing wrong right and they say oh you're he's using his phone on the Sabbath he's talking to his daughter on the phone on the Sabbath he's talking to to uh to his mom on the phone on he's using the phone on the Sabbath he's breaking the Sabbath. Is that what it's about? I mean, is that the Sabbath is not about that? If I get a phone call from my mom on the Sabbath, so what? What if she's what if she called me to say I love you, Jan? What if what if my daughter called me because she doesn't live with me? She lives with his, with her mom. I I have her every uh you know three times a week, and um, what if she calls me and she says, "Hey, Dad, I love you." You know what I mean? It's all about love, right? I mean, that's that's what it's really all about. I mean, you can, you can't. Now I feel like <laughs> I know this is this is I jokingly say this, but I feel like you know how Jesus felt like when when the Pharisees were accusing him of breaking the Sabbath. They they're looking at every every move he makes. You know, oh, he healed on the Sabbath. You're breaking the Sabbath. Where in the fourth commandment does it say you can't heal on the Sabbath? If your if your if your mom if your sibling is on the floor, um, you know, dying, God forbid, would you would you leave her there or would you take her to the hospital on the Sabbath? I mean, it's common sense, right? It's common sense. So I hope that um, that makes sense. Um, this is the reason why I I say that it's a. It's a um, sin to break the Sabbath. I mean, you guys, if you guys want to worship on Sunday, go. That's that's on you. That's your choice. You know, we, people worship every day. Go go to church on Sunday. That's your choice. But if you break the Sabbath, eh, that's I can't say nothing about that. This is God's word. So, like I said again, before you accuse someone of teaching false doctrines, look at what the guy is. Is teaching, or you look at what the guy is trying to say. Look at the evidence. Read the Bible for yourself before you accuse someone. Make sure you know what you're talking about before they 
you know, they slap you on the head with, a, with Bible verses. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Um, and so that's, that's my thing. If you guys want to, if you guys want to study with me, you know, I know some of you guys from Chicago who accuse me of these things. If you guys really want to study with me and, and, and study this in a room where we can pray and have the Holy Spirit in the midst of us and, um, and really study this, you know, so that, so that if, you know, you guys can present your arguments and I can present my argument and, and if you guys disagree and I disagree and, I mean, it's pretty much, <laughs> the Bible already says it, but whatever. I mean, if, you know, we can do that in a room or whatever, no, no harm, no, no bad blood or whatever, no insulting, um, you know, sometimes the old me, the old me comes out because I used to be, you know, I used to be one of those guys where, oh, you, you want to challenge me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to challenge me? Okay, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's do this. But that's the old me. I don't want to, I don't want to go to that, to the old me, you know what I'm saying? And, and last night or I think two days ago, that old me came out. But, you know, if you guys really want to do this, if you guys really want to study with me and, 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 um, we could do it face to face. I can even bring my camera, videotape it, or film it. You know, that would be fun. And then I can post it online. Um, but, uh, yeah, let me know. Peace out. Praise God always.